think that men and women need a different carb load? Well, well, yeah. Now, I can't speak to the... I cannot speak to the hormone differences. I do know that in a short-term study, women had an acutely higher cortisol than men, but then it did come back down to normal. That's the one study I'm aware of that showed a difference, and it wouldn't surprise me if there are more that show other Mm -hmm. differences. But I am particularly mindful of the woman who is experiencing frequent ovulation cycles where when her progesterone is increased, that is an absolute wild card Mm -hmm. that has both central and systemic effects where when her progesterone is up, progesterone does have a direct stimulation for hunger. Mm -hmm. And so if she is trying to fast during her ovula during the actual little window of ovulation. Now, of course, I'm a dude and I appreciate some people may say, you can't talk about this. So I'm just approaching it as a scientist. Yeah. I would think the evidence would suggest that would be a harder time. And I would say that it would be in her best interest to not even try. But at this and at the same time, progesterone would want to be storing more energy during that same phase, resulting in evidenced by higher insulin levels and a little more insulin resistance. So that would be a that'd be a very difficult time, I would think to try to be ketogenic or fasting. And then at another, give it or a week later, and then I, I would think the the endocrinology would suggest, all right, yep, you can do it. You're going to be, I would think that as much as your male counterpart's going to do it now, you can too. Yep. But I do think that the women's, I mean, fertility is, I mean, it is so complicated. When I get to that section in my graduate endocrinology class, I, I kind of joke where I say, okay, let's spend 10 minutes and talk about male fertility. Yeah. And now we're going to spend the next 10 <laughs> hours talking about female fertility because it is so much more complicated. Yeah, so good. And, 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 and that makes sense, right? Like the, the, the men's involvement is, of course, critical. Men matter. Dads matter. If only, you know, we need to let men want to be that role. But when it comes to actual reproduction, it's a brief, glorious moment. <laughs> Right. Women carry the beautiful yet substantial metabolic burden. And and so it's no surprise that she has way more checkpoints and checks and balances than he does, that her body needs to be almost constantly determining the environment. Yes. And the hormones are a way to determine that. It's essentially her way of having these so many redundancies of just saying, OK, are we really OK are things really okay for us to reproduce? Are they really okay for us to carry the 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 baby? Are we is it okay for us to give birth and then continue to feed the baby? You know, there's so much that goes into it that it anyway, it's once again a long-winded way of saying, yes, I do believe there are absolute reasons for the woman to be a little more mindful, particularly with her cycle because there will be changes that would make it ex- much more difficult for her to adhere to just a simple rule like her male counterpart can adhere to because he does not have the substantial changes on a regular cycle that she does. Yeah, and I think progesterone is the outlier. That progesterone does like glucose to be higher, and I think you're spot on in uh, ovulation and the week before a woman's period when progesterone's at its highest we actually, the cells become more insulin resistant. They want to keep that glucose in the stream, in the bloodstream. So I I absolutely agree with you. And that's what we've found in in our community. What do you think about the aging woman, the woman who goes into menopause? There's a lot of experts saying that are, I mean, for both men and women, but especially for women that our cells in our brain become less sensitive to glucose and more sensitive to ketones. Do you think there should be a carb change as you move into your post-menopause years? Boy, Mindy, you are pushing the limits of what I know. <laughs> so, so which I appreciate. It's fun for me. I, so please, I have to speculate for a little bit. Great. Where estradiol in particular, kind of being the main of the estrogens, the, the kind of poster child of the estrogens, it is such a heavy hitter that I kind of joke when I teach some of these principles that as as long as a woman has premenopausal levels of estrogens, she's kind of a metabolic superhero, that she's Mm. kind of bulletproof, Mm. that her body can handle all kinds of knocks and shots and and like, I mean, like external hits with regards to bad lifestyle habits. Mm. And she's immune. Yeah. She may get chubbier, 
but she's yeah, not right. going to have the di- the diabetes that her husband has or her male counterpart, the hypertension, the yep. the migraines. You know, she may be spared all of that. But even beyond the metabolic, estradiol is a powerful um, regulator of neuron health and neuron synthesis. And, and thus, it's no surprise that of all the chronic diseases, men die more from all of them except Alzheimer's disease. Right. That is the one of the top killers that is a more female specific one. And I, I believe it's because of the loss of the protective effects of, of estradiol. Now, with regards to the metabolism of the brain, I, I like the way you framed it, where some of our research supports this idea that as much as the brain is a hybrid, relying on glucose and ketones, only one of those macronutrients, one of those fuel sources, rather, has been shown to be disruptive, uh, disrupted, rather, and that is glucose. That glucose has steps of regulation in its use that ketones do not have. That when we Mm. did an analysis of postmortem hypothalamus samples, like actual human samples, every single, in the people with confirmed Alzheimer's disease at the time of death, Every gene involved in glycolysis was significantly down in glucose metabolism, whereas the genes involved in ketone metabolism were totally normal. And so my view on the individual, and certainly the woman, who has to be more mindful about brain health than her male counterpart. Again, that's kind of the unique female pathology. All the more reason, I would think, to make sure that you have some period of time where your brain is getting ketones as a, as a good fuel source because it will take it in unregulated. The moment ketones start coming into the blood, I mean, even I mean, just to put a fine point on this, and I feel inclined to be a bit animated just because my own students, like every student, has been taught such nonsense about brain metabolism that I find like I have, this is one of the ideas I have to disabuse from their brains, this false notion Everyone hears the brain prefers glucose. The glucose is the preferred fuel for the brain. That is so easily falsified, even in the the whole human. So if if glucose levels are at a normal range of about 5 millimolar and and ketones are even at a modest, like 1 millimolar, not to mention up to 1.5 or 2, but at that point already, the brain has shifted and is already getting more of its energy from the ketones than it is from the glucose. Yep. So looking at this, don't tell me that the brain prefers this one. When mm-hmm. Even when this one is at a fifth of its level, it's already surpassed right. the other. So if the brain prefers any, it's just the ketone. There's no regulation steps. The moment the ketone's going up, it is literally open doors. Not literally. It is yeah. figuratively like an open door where the ketones can just come right in. There's no bouncer. There's no usher at the door saying, okay, you can come in or you can't come in because I'm not responding to the signals anymore. You're knocking on the door, insulin, but I'm not listening. And so that's, to me, both the the relevant variable in the female physiology with the brain and neurological disorders, but also with the value of ketones and and the, the shift that happens with menopause and maybe even something to be said for the value of strategic hormone replacement therapy Mm -hmm. as well.